yet another episode where we're gonna dig out one of my old cars that's been sitting around forever and do something with it. This time, it's a 68 Dodge Charger that I think I bought about five years ago. And actually, I didn't even buy it. I traded it for a set of cylinder heads. Uh, let's go ahead and pull the wire. That's the awesome. uh, anti-theft system there. Wow. Last time I was here, these weeds were not there. It's been a while. We're gonna burn half the morning just getting to the Charger. It's better than it looks, but it has nothing in it other than a rolling chassis, meaning no engine, no transmission, no drive shaft, no wiring, no brakes, nothing. That is disgusting. Check that out. We have to get it out because if we move this and it breaks open in the car. Do you see what this is? It's like movie parts. This is a movie F-bomb fender from Fast and Furious. Check it out. They wrecked like five of these cars for the 30 seconds that that thing was in the movie. So we moved Freiburger's crappy Jeep. We need to move Freiburger's crappy Charger, but his crappy trailer has a winch that doesn't have a crappy battery to power it. So we're gonna take his crappy Suburban to an auto parts store to get a battery, to work the winch, to get the Charger out, just so we can get to somebody's driveways, so we can start working on this massive drivetrain swap that he has in mind three days? Two and a half. Yeah, we're hosed. <laughs> I have a vision for this car, and I don't think it's exactly what his vision is. My vision is it's sailing through the air in a bright orange ball of fire, you know, over a canyon. You want General Lee? I want I, General Lee. I want the General Mayhem. That's what this is gonna be. The General Mayhem. Mayhem's good. Yeah. As long as it's orange with an 01 on it. No. The first step was to blow all of the rat turds out of the charger, so we loaded it up on the back of the Macho Grande and dragged it over to the coin-op car wash. I'd bet a dollar that today, we're the only ones hauling a 68 charger behind a Macho Grande through Burbank, California. That makes us winners. I like the way you've really asked no questions about the condition of the charger, what might be missing, what I did or didn't order, what the parts vehicle is. I have really low expectations for this deal. <laughs> I'll say this episode will not end without us having it running and driving. How's that? Movie magic. <laughs> uh, you did leave yourself a good size out there. Yes. Well, it's difficult to see right now, but this car is actually full of critters that want to kill me. So we're going to hose it out here at the car wash before we even think about working on this piece of crap. Yuck. You're going to get scurvy right now. Oh, look, here's a whole bag of Corona bottles. Oh, you're about to get gonoherpesyphilis. Oh, that stinks. Yuck! Oh! Oh! <laughs> so glad this isn't my Oops, car. That broke. Oh, and you broke the bottle. This right here is what makes the Charger cool. Go faster grooves in the doors. Look at that. This looks like speed happening right there. It's restored now. All right, you're going all out, suds and everything. I think this fender is probably giving you ideas. Dude, I'm telling you, it's like it already wants to be a general leaf. The car's talking to you right now. Look, orange suds are coming off of this side. It's telling you, it's bleeding orange. It's saying, come on, jump me, jump me. Keep in mind, I've never seen the donor view. Oh wow, this is kind of nice. And it's way too nice to rip apart. Nobody wants the Dodges, that's the problem, especially a long bed three quarter ton. But Mopar people are strange and they're gonna be mad that you gutted the Mopar even though it's for a better Mopar. I couldn't bring myself to tear up that Dodge truck because it was so clean. So the problem was we needed to find something that was a donor with a big block Mopar in it that I was not gonna have sentimental attachment to. And then Finnegan surfed Craigslist and came up with the genius idea. What, what engine is in this thing? Is it on fire? I wanted a big block Mopar really badly. And one of the sources for them is old Dodge motorhomes. There's a zillion of them out there. They're dirt cheap. This is a class A, which means not based on a van. Big ugly, I think it's on an M800 chassis and it has a 440 and a 727. It's got a battery we can use. 
maybe some wiring and stuff like that, and it runs good. We just picked it up, drove it three or four blocks, and it's already leaking. I know how to solve that. It's overheating. Let's take the hood off. Let's take the hood off. <laughs> <laughs> you know it has a cooling problem when it comes with the return jug that they failed to install. Well, you know, they had, they had good intentions at least. I didn't know this thing came with landscaping. Check that out. I'm telling you, dude. That's like topiary right there. We've never bought anything this nice. I'm really surprised the brakes work that well, or at least the front ones do. <laughs> we got the Brady Bunch Edition shag carpet, nicely discolored and molded. The door does not stay shut, so that sort of flaps in the breeze, and there is this custom rope to hold it shut, but we figure that's not really necessary for our purposes. <laughs> it's seriously making my eyes burn in here. Ugh. It's so bad. I don't get why it's okay up here. I mean, not good, it's fungus. But from that point back, literally, it burns your eyes and you can't breathe. <laughs> I wasn't kidding, right? <laughs> what is that? Potapori? We have a super tight timetable to make this swap happen. So immediately after buying the motorhome, we headed straight to my buddies at OC Driveline to trade them the generator out of the motorhome for the drive shaft we need to connect the 440 to the Dodge Charger. I haven't really checked out the engine yet. Oh man, it stinks. Yep, this is a Chrysler 440 big block. You can always tell the big blocks from the small blocks because the distributor's in the front where the small block has it in the back. And, ooh, thermal quad. That is a Carter Thermal Quad, the famous carburetor with the plastic body. That's genius. That's gonna run really well on the Charger. It's time to take the hood off, roadkill style. Oh yeah, that's gonna be way more efficient. And it's attractive. Next. <laughs> look at that, look at the flow. Yeah, I think that's good. You know what I'm thinking though is it burns your eyes so bad in there, I'm, we're gonna need some ventilation. I like what you, you're, you're going picking up with. what I'm putting down. You want one on your side? If the engine cover's off, we'll get flow through the grill, across the engine, and out the back. This was really It'd unnecessary, like, but fun. Yeah. Because I want people to look at my calves while I'm driving. Here's what I was thinking. Ready? <laughs> Push it in, don't hit it. There you go. <laughs> Thermal quad! The only carburetor that punishes you for trying to go full throttle. <laughs> we try going to the floor. Nice! There we go. Wow! That's the sound of power! I don't sense quite enough fear in all these people. No. I don't think they know. You mean we need to show them what the Pace Arrow is capable of? I think so. <laughs> Let me see if I can affix the door. Isn't there a piece of rope in here? Okay, let's see. I'm worried this thing's gonna hit a motorcycle of splitting lanes. Here, hold that open. <laughs> ah! Wait. Got it. Okay. Now I got rope. You got the screen door. <laughs> if you believe our temp gauge, this thing is running ice cold. Upon closer inspection, she's puking coolant all over the ground. So I don't believe the gas gauge either, so we put gas in both the main on and auxiliary tank which didn't move the gauge at all. And they both only took 10 gallons. But it's running fine, and I honestly think we're gonna make it. Yeah, that door might be okay. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. If yeah, pull over, we'll rip it off completely. <laughs> yeah. coming off, it's fine. Ah, it's just this. 
Ah, it's just the guts. <laughs> <laughs> With no tools on hand, we just decided to start ripping the door off. And that only got us so far. I'm a human can opener right now. When all of a sudden, the LA Department of Transportation shows up and they've got an ax. There we go. We need to get that, uh, that off there. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very State much. State of California saves us. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> We spent all day getting the motor home here and it's out in the street, but it won't fit down the driveway and it's too late for us to hack out the sawzalls right now. So we're gonna get to work on the charger. Let's start right here and work our way back and remove everything we don't need just to get it out of our way. Starting with the hood. Because That's a good kill. idea. You know how they say to make a statue, you start with a big block of stone and chip away everything that isn't a naked woman? We're right now chipping away everything that isn't a badass charger. Ugh, gross. Looks gross in here. By the time we got back here to actually work on the charger, it's so late at night we can't make any noise. So we'll pick this up again tomorrow. Uh, I am jacking up the back of the car so that I can rip out the gas tank because that'll probably be the quietest job I can do right now. And since it's 8 a.m. in the morning, the neighbors probably don't want to hear me busting ball joints loose with a hammer and a fork. Or they jumped it. Some Bow and Luke Duke stuff right there. <laughs> the thing I love about Roadkill is we're gonna put nice, shiny aftermarket parts on that crud right there because we don't have time to do any better. And we always go, oh yeah, I'll take it apart and fix it later. I don't. I never say that. I say you'll never take it apart and fix it later. <laughs> I always say that. <laughs> there's no brake drums. And there hasn't there's no springs. There hasn't been anything back here for a really long time. Are you are you swapping to discs? <laughs> okay. No, I, I had no clue. Oh, this is all road killed. Look at that. That's going to put a damper in our uh, schedule. That just screwed us. Yeah, completely. Drink beer? <sighs> Drink beer to think about it? <laughs> At this point, the episode fell to complete disaster and it was obvious we weren't going to get it done. We had to run off and shoot something else. And so I took the hulk of the Pacero motorhome, shoved it back into storage, abandoned the charger at Rob's house and walked away for a month and a half before we started working on it again. Have you ever considered dusting this car? Just a light little Swiffer right here on the dash so you can see the gauges. You've done an excellent job of keeping your area clean. Did you buy a Supra too? No. This that... isn't even a good Supra. People always park here and block my spots. I've had vehicles that I've sold that I can't sell because Junk is in the way, so we got to. This move gets that. worse since the last time we were here. Looks like someone messed with the spare tire. Let's see if it runs. Whatever that funk was in the back the last time we drove this, that's gone. But I think it's been replaced by spiders and other things I don't want anywhere near me. Just pour a bunch of that on there so it blows up right in my face. That's good, right? That's enough. <laughs> That was all that. Oh! <laughs> I thought I was gonna be able to find a junkyard to just take this thing. It turns out we're gonna have to pay to have it hauled away and they won't take it complete. No one around here. So we're gonna have to sawzall the whole body off of the motor home. We ordered a dumpster to throw all the junk in and then we're gonna have to have the frame hauled away separately. This is a reciprocating saw, and it's my friend, my good friend. See that? Look at the action on that baby. It's gonna turn this into butter right now. Look at that, like butter. In our warped and twisted minds, we decided we'll rent a dumpster, cut the entire thing up by ourselves in one day, and throw it all away. Oh, cool. 
is our guy. All right, perfect. Well, we've given the Supra guy at least half a day to move his junk, so time's up. He's getting blocked in. This is my level of concern. That was impressive. Now that we've got the side open, our plan is to cut the whole floor out so that we can just get directly to the engine. Almost missed. <laughs> Good. See? Liberate it. This should have been a factory option. Three. Oh! <laughs> that was close. I really thought that was coming back. I did too. All I wanted was the big block Chrysler for my charger. What a fiasco. This is debacle. You're setting De records right Defcon here. Defcon 6 here. Uh. We just went in, not even a circle back to the beginning. This was a figure eight back to the beginning. But this is a 440. <laughs> Those other ones are only 400s. Uh, that makes it all worthwhile. It's all worthwhile. So I call about the motorhome. I say, how much is it? $1,200. Okay. I show up. It's a lady and her husband. And I'm driving it around. It runs okay, not great. And I'm, I'm trying to bargain with her and I'm like hey you know 1200 seems kind of high how about a thousand no I'm pretty firm on 1200 all right so I drive it around the block a few times come back home shut it off and it diesels for no joke about 30 seconds straight <laughs> and it finally stops and I go so you'll take a thousand huh she's all yeah <laughs> and what a deal you got <laughs> look at this way I got an entire house for a thousand dollars engine in out for the first time for the last time Oh, you knew that was gonna happen. Why couldn't we get a hoist with childbearing hips? This ain't gonna work. Looking pretty solid to me. There we go. That's one side. Yeah, it seems like it's still... Remove it. Freedom. Okay. Can you try and bucket that? <laughs> um, Too late. It's done. Yeah. It was a lot like a recreational vehicle archeological dig to get the 440 out of this thing, but finally, we liberated the glorious Big Block Mopar. Best part though, is that we found a guy who's gonna take this thing so we don't have to cut it in a million pieces and throw it in the dumpster. I'll be honest, we yeah. had to pay him to take it. Yeah, but don't care. And so tomorrow, I'll go get the ramp truck, I'll load the Fury on it, I'll come here, we'll put this in the trunk of the Fury oh, on right. the ramp truck, yep. return the $400 with the Sawzall blades, drive the whole mess to the charger, and then and then make a bigger mess there. Pillage the Fury and the engine for the charger. Yep, no, that's perfect. Everybody got that? <laughs> Look at him, already stripping parts. Ah, the Fury, my old friend. I'm here scavenging parts off the motorhome and Finnegan just showed up with the Fury. She's a little overloaded right now, breaking through the floor. Oh, I know. So right now what we're gonna do is roll the Fury back a few feet, swing the engine out of the motorhome, up into the air, and into the trunk of the Fury. And then tow the whole circus over to the charger, unload everything again. Why do we make things so difficult? No one's ever parked a 440 in the trunk of a Fury on the back of a ramp truck and driven through Burbank. I'd say it starts setting it down, what's the worst that could happen? Just put a hole in the fuel cell and fuel everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is the world's only rear motored 73 Fury. There, I solved that problem. It's through. I'm not even, even going to ask what that was. Oh, this isn't going anywhere. Probably not coming out either. Now, the donkey's not going to the junkyard, that's going back in my living room. Oh, that's good. doing the car dance right now. We had to move the charger out so that we can get the Fury in so that we can work on it more easily. So it'll be charger out, Fury in, charger back in, charger out, Fury out to the junkyard, charger back in. Got that? Okay. I, I didn't get that at all. What are we doing? Let her rip. Uh, 
think we're bottomed out on the driveway. Whoa. <laughs> we're wedged against the inside of the trunk like we were predicting. What'd that car ever do to you? Okay, pushing your way, it's gonna do that. Okay. Yep, slice those two plug wires. The Fury is gonna donate the transmission, the front accessories, the seats, some of the wiring, maybe the rear brakes, most of its soul. Just, you know, the things we need, the little things. I thought we honestly were gonna be able to get this whole car running and driving in three days, but my three days means six. I like it when I show up and you're already working. It's like when you come back from the bathroom at a restaurant and the food's already there. I decided to go ahead and take the engine out separate from the transmission, basically, so we don't just bloodbath the driveway. Oh, that sounds messy. I'm just gonna sit here and watch you work for a while. Makes me all warm and fuzzy inside. Time to relieve the donkey of its duties. <laughs> I'm just leaving like that for a while. I can't believe that I'm scraping grease off of an engine so we can clean it so that Freiberger can paint it. An engine that came out of a motorhome that we bought for $1,000 that's gonna get stuffed into a charger that probably cost $1,000, driven once on roadkill, and then stuffed in some back lot later. Like everybody buys a motorhome, they're like, woohoo, travel the country with our family. Then they find out their kids hate them and don't wanna spend that much time in a car with them. Yep. So the motorhome sits in the driveway and accumulates a total of 38,000 miles over a 30 year span. So I'm gonna gunk this thing, and they had three different things at Pep Boys. Original, foamy, and heavy duty gel. So I'm gonna find out which one I like best. True story, when I was in <laughs> high school, and I didn't know anything about cars, my Camaro leaked a lot of oil. And my Friday night ritual was to take my paycheck, head to the local auto parts store, buy gunk and clean my engine before going out. <laughs> that was it. Never fixed the oil leak, I just cleaned it every Friday. Because roadkill. Shut it off, dude. <laughs> Let this thing dry for a couple of hours and it actually came out pretty good. I think I like the gel and foamy gunk better than the original. They kind of stick to the thing better and the, the heavy duty stuff, you can almost see the grease falling off. Mopar guys are gonna be all over me for not painting it either hemi orange or Chrysler turquoise. Freshly rebuilt. Wow, Fonzie, all black, huh? <laughs> Yeah. If I painted it orange, it would have been way worse. I, I think you've talked yourself into this. Yeah. I think it was a valuable use of our time and resources. You know, it was blue. It couldn't be blue. It's going in a black car. So now it's black. Now we have to pull the engine out of the Fury and then uh, take the transmission out. Or do that. Torque converter sort of coming out with the motor, but it wanted to. Now, let's decide where this is gonna sit for six years. Rob's front lawn. The transmission in the motor home had a companion flange on the back of it instead of a slip yoke, so we couldn't use it. So that's why we're using this transmission. You want me to lower it a little bit? Wow, how does this leak that bad? How's that even possible? We just made a bloodbath of epic proportion over here. Oh my God. There's a triple wow. homicide under the fury. This is unbelievable. You know, the thing is, ATF is mostly a detergent, so we're really cleaning your driveway. So in a twisted way, you owe us. <laughs> oh, okay. It doesn't really need a clean before you got it. <laughs> uh, look at how good it is. Look how shiny it is now. <laughs> This Fury was a factory towing package model, which is kind of like a cop car package, and it has a factory limited slip in it. So we're gonna pull out the whole center section out of this rear end and put it in the charger so that we have posse for better donuts. And it also has 11 inch drum brakes on the back, which I'm gonna take off and put on the charger, which has factory 10 inch brakes. So the Fury, once again, the gift that keeps on giving. We're like the Native Americans, you know? We're not just out there hunting buffalo for sport. You know, we're gonna eat every piece off of this Fury so there's nothing left that anyone can use. Oh. 
We started off our morning sending the Fury to the junkyard, which is a roadkill first. Usually we take cars from the junkyard or we have cars that should be there. It's opposite day. So now we're gonna pull the pan off the motor, put on a new oil pan that will fit the charger. We're gunking the transmission and we're gonna bolt it all together and hopefully have the engine in the car in about 15 minutes. We are getting close. As if by magic. It's like it's already done. <laughs> we could just start drinking beer now. Look how close we are. Now. Okay. I've probably had the charger for about seven years and it's just been a rolling hulk the whole time. So this is a pretty big moment. I've been wanting this for quite a while. Ryberger and I have worked on this car off and on for the last three months. We've wired it, we've plumbed it, we put the shifter in, put a drive shaft in it. So it's got functioning gauges for Christ's sakes. This thing is probably nicer than most anything we've had on Roadkill just because we were the ones that worked on it. It's actually wired properly. A proper fuse block. That's right, if something goes wrong, the fuse blows, the car doesn't burn to the ground. For once it's not a fire hazard. I wouldn't go that far. This thing is finally ready to crank to life. And we could probably go off-roading in the next 24 hours, I predict. I've been keeping it as cheap as I possibly can, doing stuff like reusing the thermal quad, using two sets of spark plug wires to make one good set. This has got one set off the Fury and a couple wires off the motorhome. And look at the zip tie wire separators, which is always a good tech tip right there. And here's where all the science happens. Start button, ignition, fans, headlights, and for Johnny Law, that turns off our taillights in case we got to get away really fast. If I push the start button, he's going to flinch. Whoa! <laughs> you're going to puke tranny fluid everywhere. Oh, you're just startled that this piece of crap actually cranked over after three months. Oh, this is the real reason to own a 68 Charger, <laughs> is for the flip open gas filler. I love this thing. I actually bought that new reproduction for like $47 because I love it so much. Yeah. I think Dodge Plymouth Chrysler stole that from boat guys. Don't care. It's cool. I plan on firing the thing up today, but we still have some things to do. Uh, there's a brake line that needs to be made. Need to put the push rod in there. Of course, Finnegan's installing the tack. That's crucial. Um, I want to hang the fender. Also crucial. Put a bumper on it and stuff like that. What else do we have to do? It's getting down to short list. Rub some awesome on it and go hit the road. I have a 69 fender that we have to modify just a little bit to bolt on to it. Zero insurance and registration. In fact, you know, we don't even know that the car isn't hot. I traded the thing for a set of cylinder heads. It, it might, might not, not be, be registrable. <laughs> this might not even be your car. That's right. We might have just put the thing running and driving for some guy we don't even know. Right now, Freiberger is pouring some gas down the car, and we're going to try to fire up the charger for the very first time since 1983. Go. Stop. Let me, oh, do you have the ignition on? I did. Can you make sure the box is lit up? The box doesn't have a light on it. I'm trying to fill the float bowls of the carburetor by pouring gas down the vent tube. Okay. Here it comes. Wow, it sounds weak. <laughs> we just ran out of gas. It had 75 pounds. Yeah. Uh, it runs, but there's only a couple issues. One of which is it sounds like an absolute heard this thing makes 200 horsepower uh, second of which is it has not picked up gasoline out of the tank yet I can't just keep feeding it uh, gas into the carburetor so I think I'm gonna fill up the float bowl and see if we can get it to run long enough that it'll actually suck it up out of the tank as far as I'm concerned a charger should sound like the General Lee and this does not sound like that A charger that runs and <laughs> smells really good. I'm a little good. jealous over here because I know this this is temporary where I'm sitting. This is big. It's 
car needs to be jumping over a river. If we tried to drive it right now, we may just disappoint ourselves. Probably. We should just bask in what we have happening right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is a car on jack stands. That, that runs. runs. And revs. Most cars on jack stands don't run or rev. I don't care if you don't paint this like the Duke's car or not, I'm still sliding across the hood. Five months later, it's winter in Southern California, which means it's raining and we've got uh, thicker clothes on. The driveway is a bitchin' shade of rainbow from all the fluids that are dropped on it. And the Charger is not here because Freiburger actually drove it to an exhaust shop and an alignment shop. <laughs> oh, look how straight the wheels are. With exhaust of sorts, Look what we made. The guy at the alignment shop said we would have died if we'd taken off as it was. Well, the wheels were like this and like yep. this. It I was... was. I've only driven it two blocks. No reverse. Nope. Seriously, absolutely nothing. How is that possible that it drove in the driveway? And as soon as it saw you, it broke. I honestly fear that people think that we will have faked this for drama because it's so unbelievable, but you have to see this. We do not lie on roadkill. Fire the thing up. We know it has fluid. We put it in reverse. We know it's shifting. It goes no, whoop, hey. I just tried to drive that car and it wouldn't move. How's this possible? Oh no, it's dead again. Except now it's dead in the street. I seriously thought Freiburger was pulling some sick and twisted joke on me when he magically made the car stop moving. So we shoved it back in the driveway, crawled under it, it, jerked the transmission out of the thing again, and ran it to a shop down the street where we found out that I had not gotten the torque converter fully seated in the front pump when I put the engine in the car the first time. While the transmission was down the street getting rebuilt, we had plenty of time to make the charger cool and even legal. We hung some headlights in the front of it, and because an original charger grill in mint condition costs like 2,500 bucks, we ended up making this killer Mad Max grill out of some perforated steel. We just created probably the greatest grill that mankind has ever known, and we don't have beer to celebrate. Uh, there might be one Bud Light, so you're right, we don't have beer to celebrate. No, no, this achievement. There's just no celebration in Bud this Light. This is the equivalent of stepping foot on the moon. That's what happened here today. <laughs> if I was a guy in a Prius or a Yaris and I saw this coming at me in the rearview mirror, I'd get out of the way. Right as we wrapped up the grill, the guy called and said that the transmission was finally done. So he ran over there to pick it up, slapped it in the car, and then, of course, the topper. We had to throw on the Fury's Hemi hood scoop because the Fury always brings good luck. We're going on a road trip today. There, I called it. I declare this charger roadworthy. Ready? That was cool, fire out of the scoop. I can't even believe it. We are finally gonna hit the road. All right, I'll be Bo, you be Luke. Yeehaw! That's not smoking as much as it was. Rob's our friend, but you really need to do a burnout down this street. Oh no, it's a big. That was it? <laughs> that, was, that was on the floor? Pretty much. Oh my God. What's that noise? Drive line? You bolt the drive shaft in? Yeah. Kind of. <laughs> oh my god, that's dirty. What is the smoke? Headers? It's the dirt coming out of the dash, dude. No, that's smoke. See the smoke pouring out of here? It's hard to tell. Look behind us, dude. 
Hey, have you ever seen that Cheech and Chong movie? I'm thinking we should pull over. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> oh my god. We might be on fire, dude. Yeah, I know. So we got on the freeway. Coming out of the other side. Things sounded awesome. Like, literally, greatest exhaust note ever. Reminded me a lot of the muscle truck. And then it was just James Bond smoke, the whole entire freeway. I think we stopped three lanes of traffic just now because it's puking tranny fluid everywhere. Dipstick came out. Came out? Hey, it's gone. Transmission fluid catches on fire good. And uh, luckily that didn't happen yet. We did have the James Bond smoke screen going on. Went to put the dipstick in and that's supposed to go into one of those bolts. But we were kind of in a hurry to leave. So I thought, oh, well, I'm just going to hammer the dipstick tube in put some RTV on it and it'll be good. And it wasn't good, this just blew out. My fault, I almost burnt the car to the ground. We have got some sort of a clunk going on up here when it's rotating. I should probably look into that while he's fixing that deal. Okay, I found that clunk, we're good. It's the wheel weight is just hitting the, the uh, upper ball joint. It'll fall off soon enough. Daylight was winding down, but finally we had this thing running again and hit the road. I can't tell you why this was such a lifelong dream for me, but I have always just loved thrashing passenger cars around in the desert. And to have a 68 Charger in particular, it just brought back the vibes of Dukes of Hazard, and Dirty Mary Crazy Larry, and even Bullet. It's just, I was raised to believe that a 68, 69 Charger is the most indestructible vehicle off-road, and I was set to prove it. I swear I was riding in the General Lee. It sounded just like it. <laughs> Wait for the next one. That's oh, gonna be good. Water came right through the floor, dude. <laughs> oh, oh shit! Screwed. <laughs> All four wheels never left the ground. We've got too much respect for this car. But we did get it sideways around every corner. We did throw dirt in the air. We had a blast. Man, this episode was a long way to go. I think back about how I really thought that we were gonna get this charger done in three days but it turned into six months, but finally ended up with exactly what I've wanted for a long time, and that is the Mad Max Vibe 68 Charger. And in the end, there's only one thing left to do, a proper burnout. It's an eight. Okay. Yeah, I believe it's eight. Yeah. Is that a, a, v, a V8? Let me talk to my uh, my wife here and see if she'll give me some money. I don't understand. Oh, we're gonna pay you to take this. We don't want it. You take it, and we'll give you money. Oh. It just got better, didn't it? It's not pay five hundred for that. <laughs> no, no. We're gonna give you money. Yeah.